ah, if we die, we die. If bad, bad. And like we like to say it here, come on, buyer, buyer. My name is Angie Obwaka, and today we're going to be continuing on our series of Hope Lives. And uh, I know, I know, that intro was like, uh, wait, doesn't sound very hopeful, but I'm going somewhere with this, stick with me. So there's a very interesting story in uh, the book of uh, Kings, in 2 Kings chapter 7. It's a story of four lepers, four lepers who are Israelites. And at this particular season, Israel is going through a lot. There is famine in the city. And these lepers, obviously, because they were um, outcasts, they were sitting at the gate. Um, and the reason there was famine in the city is because an army, the Syrian army, had laid siege around the um, city um, of Israel. And so um, these lepers find themselves at the gate. And so they are stuck there inside. They can't come at the beginning, verse 3, it says, we can't go into the city because there's famine there, we're going to die. But we can't even go to the enemy's camp because if we go there, they'll kill us. They'll know we're Israelites and they will kill us. But one of them said to the others, you know what? If we go in, we die. If we go out, we die. So uh, come on, buyer, buyer. You know, we're not going to sit here and just die here. Let us at least make some effort and just go somewhere. So they knew there was no food where, from home. So they decided, you know what? As we're going to go to the Syrian camp, if they kill us, they kill us. But they might have mercy and we might find food. So guess what? They get up and you know, um, you know or you don't know, with leprosy, there's a lot of wasting of body parts. So uh, fingers, toes, people probably didn't have a foot or a leg or whatever it was. So they were crawling, they were suffering, they were struggling, made it all the way to the Syrian camp. Here's what they didn't know. They were just going to try their luck. But what they didn't know is that God multiplied their footsteps, their dragging footsteps, their heavy, painful, difficult, um, hope-filled footsteps. God multiplied. And in the sound of the king and the, and the army generals of the Syrian um, camp, it sounded like troops were coming. Like they were like, oh man, like people have mobilized and the armies are coming against us. And so everybody in the Syrian camp ran away and left all their, um, the things that their, their, their uh, boot, what do you call them, booties? Uh, the, the, you know, the, the collectibles from war. They left all their food, they left all their treasures and everything that they have gotten um, from war there. So the lepers arrive there and there is no one. And so they eat, 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 and then, you know, eventually call the rest of the Israelites um, to come and uh, partake with them. But here is the thing. Here is where, here is where the hope situation and story is that I want to share with you guys. You know, sometimes we can be so at the end of ourselves and feeling like, you know what? If I turn this way, it's a rock. This side, it's a hard place. I have sent out my applications to place after place. I have invested. I have prayed. I have fasted. I have been laid on hands. I have laid hands on myself. I have done all that I know to do. But I just feel like I am not moving and I am stuck. I don't want to do anything. But can I challenge you this December, the end of the year, where it feels like now it's, it's, there's nothing else left to do. Can I challenge you like one of these lepers? You know what? It might look bad where you're coming from. It might look bad where you want to go out. But there is hope when you begin to move. God multiplied the sound of the steps of these lepers, the sound of the steps of these outcasts, of these ones who, I mean, their steps were not like, you could not hear them thundering because they were dragging along the way. And you might feel that way. But here is my encouragement. Here's my challenge. If you have been asking God, just speak to me one more time. Just, just, just tell me I should carry on. This is God speaking to you through me, I believe. Just to encourage you, there is still hope. Take that one more chance. Send in that one last application. Go out and put yourself out there. Pray one more time. Give one more time. Show up one more time because God is able to multiply that one effort. He's able to do. Think about the story of the two, two loaves, um, two, two fish and five loaves. How God multiplied the little that was given. Give God your faith. Give God, put your hope and trust in God one more time and let him multiply your effort. It might be more um, than what you have seen throughout the year. And I pray and I agree with in faith with you that the effort that you're going to put in the final bit of this year, even as you trust God, that Lord God, I have been putting myself out there. I've been doing, I've been sowing, I have been giving, I have been doing what I know to do, but it hasn't been working. But God, I am believing you in the same way you did it for these people, the same way you multiplied for the lepers. God, I am praying that you will multiply for me. You will multiply for everybody listening in this video, that God, there will be a turnaround. There will be a shift. There will be a multiplication. There will be a harvest greater than just for ourselves. In the same way, the lepers who are outcasts even had so much 
they were like, okay, we can't have this for ourselves. They went back and called the rest of their tribesmen. I pray that even for you, let there be a harvest so big. Let there be a testimony so, so, so big and so grand that you go back. And even the ones who said no, even the ones who didn't believe you, you call them to partake and to participate in the goodness of the Lord. God bless you. God multiply your effort. God give you fresh hope and fresh zeal to continue going, to continue seeking, to continue doing, even in this season. God bless you and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.